Offensive performance, which one of you two? Uh, obviously, it was pretty good. Um, we put a lot more points on the board. Um, we were doing um, pretty well on third down. We had a good scheme for third down, and we did, just did a good job of maintaining drives and, and holding those drives and um, scoring at the end. What were opportunities you saw last week, looking back at the film, though, that you were happy about, and what were some that you felt like maybe you missed an opportunity? Um, well, obviously, there's a lot you can grow on, but um, we're just really pleased with um, just the completions and just getting the drive started and having a lot of um, good drives on the first few first downs and then just getting it started and then finishing uh, with touchdowns. How important is just getting into a rhythm? I mean, your completion percent, I think, was the highest since Mariota in 2012. How much does just the rhythm, getting into a rhythm, help you as a, as a thrower? Oh, it's huge just as um, any quarterback just enjoys those good, easy completions that kind of get the drive started and then um, it puts you in a good rhythm just with seeing the defense and um, all that stuff. And then on third downs, obviously, it's just important to get the ball out and then um, let you guys make plays. How do you judge and assess your own? Uh, beyond looking at the film, obviously, and looking, mm -hmm. you chat without the Kenny for sure. But I mean, is there a number? Is there a measure beyond completion percentage? Is there a certain stat you look for? Is there something you're mindful of and evaluate yourself? Um, nothing uh, in particular. Obviously, completion percentage is important just because if the ball's in the air, you want to complete passes. Um, and then just looking at just the attention to details with drops and footwork and um, run game footwork and reads. And I mean, there's so much that goes into it. Um, it's really hard to put a number beside it. What's the challenge BYU presents defensively? Uh, it's just very multiple and very physical. Uh, they give you a lot of different looks um, inside the box. Um, pretty good um, in a lot of areas, a lot of positions. They do a good job of letting their players play. Um, and, and they aren't really um, necessarily exotic. They just line up in a bunch of different, different places. What's your, I guess, like, the back and forth between you, Kenny, and, and Alex this week like then with a defense that's very notable? Uh, it's just finding their, um, you know, their base pictures and, and knowing where they're supposed to be. And then if they're not there, kind of having the awareness that something may be up. Um, it's just a lot of film, a lot of um, practice work out on the field um, with your guys getting in the right spots. For a game like this, and between both caliber opponents, the caliber defense, do you pay more attention to the first couple, particularly last week's game with them and Baylor, since it was a really good opponent there too, and mm -hmm. really good offense? Or do you go back to last year? Like, how much, how many games worth of film do you look at? Well, I, you got to look at all the games where their defense coach has been there, and obviously um, it's been a while, so you can go back um, just as far as that and look at all the games it's called, because um, most of the time coaches are gonna be kind of similar, they're not going to change a whole lot, so you can pick up a lot of different things each game you look at, but um, you definitely obviously want to look at their personnel just this year, what they're putting on the field, and then scheme-wise you can look as far back as you want. Can you speak to just the play of your offensive line? Yeah. Guys are shuffling, may, may have some more this week, and you haven't been sacked, and very few pressures too. Yeah, I mean, it's um, as a quarterback, that's the best thing is when um, the offensive line is really good. And I think just um, the most part is how experienced they are. Um, they just do a really good job of communicating. Um, they watch film a lot together. They um, just very close knit group that um, has seen a lot of football and then communicates well. And um, and then they play really hard up front. And that's all you can ask for as a quarterback. Do you feel like there's been any change with Harper in the lineup? Because it's a guy that hasn't played in over a thousand days until the last couple of weeks. And doesn't feel like there's much of a drop off. Uh, to be honest, no, because um, from week one to week two, there was, I mean, you saw a lot of consistencies. Um, obviously, down the road, you can continue to see guys go in and out, and because um, unfortunately at the line position, um, sometimes it, a lot of guys get injured and banged up, and so you got to have a lot of different lineups. Um, but I'm comfortable with all those guys, confident, um, and trust them all. What Troy and Terrence done in particular, because you turned to them a lot on third down and not just this past week, even, even in the Georgia game, you're looking for them a good bit. Just, when it, when it, with a younger receiver core that hasn't been either proven statistically or proven in those third down moments and go-to guys, it looks like you've gotten comfortable pretty quickly with two guys on in those spots. Yeah, and, and then it, all that goes back to just scheme and um, who's going to get open on a particular play. and um, A lot of the times the defense dictates that. And, we have some um, good schemes to get guys in matchups that we know are going to be successful, and obviously those two guys are, are, are two that 
um, have had success in the past couple of weeks and um, obviously we'll continue to do so but um, it's just all about getting good matchups on third down and um, with the inexperience um, those guys are just going to continue to get more and more reps at it and so you may see a lot more other guys um, get those kind of opportunities. You Obviously the Georgia game is a huge game but you've played in a lot of top 25 and big game environments and you know what that's like but obviously you're turning here and throughout the SEC. This is the first one here in four years so it's not other than the really older guys like you. Like, very few guys on the team would have been here in 2018 when they even played. How do you get prepared for that kind of big game environment? Though? You know, you just, um, like any other game, I think you take it, each game is an important game. Uh, maybe the environment will be different, but, you know, it's good to have it at home. So the you know, environment for us shouldn't um, change too much. I mean, it shouldn't be a um, difficulty communicating. Um, and that's just the luxury of playing at home in, in these type of games. But um, I see it being a huge factor, obviously, for them um, to communicate, and that's always a good thing. What's made Sean so effective for you guys as a running back, either running or catching? You, you've looked at him quite a bit, and he's made some plays in both games for you guys. Yeah, he's just very versatile. Um, he does a good job out of the backfield catching, catching the ball and running after the catch. Obviously, he runs really hard, and then he's a really good pass protector as well. Um, he's Kind of like me, he's been playing for a while, um, seen a lot of different looks. And so, um, obviously, just with his experience, it's good to have him in the backfield. I don't know if anyone was really anticipating him maybe leading the team in rushing. I know it's two games, but did you see that during fall camp, that this was going to be a guy that was going to be making these plays for you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Just because um, I think just him being a veteran, um, him being around a lot, he's just... Um, kind of at that point to where he, he's able to do that. He's able to be on the field in a lot of different situations. And when you're on the field, um, good things happen. We've got a linebacker who's got an interception, a pick six earlier this year. But he's had interceptions for like four years in a row. Played a lot of great linebackers in the SEC. Anybody compares by way of coverage ability, like I say, he's built more like a safety, and that's why he's got picks. But it's really all over the field. Yeah, uh, you know, sometimes you see guys like that. Um, that are do-it-all kind of guys, can play in the box, can cover. Um, seen a lot of different, of those type of players, um, none really come to mind, but obviously when, as defenses continue to progress, um, it's always good to have that guy that you don't have to take out, and so it won't um, make any personnel changes and won't raise awareness um, from that category. But um, I think just with his position, uh, he does a good job, and um, so we'll see what happens. When fans are always climbing for more and more deep throws, you know, they all want bombs. They all want 40 or 50-yard passes. I'm sure you love a couple of them, too. Yeah. How much of, like, last week was just in part by design? But you, you, either you guys didn't want to show it, didn't have to show it, and it wasn't that you were deliberately not throwing them. It was that yeah. you were It was trying to keep things under wraps a little bit. Is yeah. that fair? Yeah. Well, a lot of times fans want bombs, but they don't look at the defense a whole lot. <laughs> um, and defenses want to prevent bombs. <laughs> Um, and so I think fans just kind of get caught up in what they want. And um, I mean, they just don't necessarily understand a whole lot. <laughs> oh, Noah talked about uh, Cam's impact in the blocking game. What has his impact in the blocking game been like for you? That's been huge. Um, just to add his experience and physicality to that room, um, just to add another guy um, that has a great skill set um, and it just allows us to be very multiple with, with different things. and. Um, he obviously made some good plays on Saturday, uh, getting the ball in his hands, and um, it's just good to see him be back on the field. Do you think that mixture of blocking and catching ability has gotten him those significant snaps? Absolutely. Um, obviously, when you're just one-sided, you could tell the defense kind of what the play is, so when you're balanced, it's always good to use guys how they're, um, what they're good at, and uh, if you can run, catch the ball, and also block, then you're going to be doing a lot of good things on the field. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.